there was an open here because you would put a series component and then a shunt. And you have an L network, right? The same thing we've been talking about. So I guess you wouldn't need this one. But technically you got room, you can squeeze something in. Um, obviously all of this, all of this is ground, so that's the other end of our, that's the other side of our, the other conductor in our, our transmission line. This is this isn't this isn't technically microstrip. It's, um, it's called code planar because the ground and the signal share a plane. Um, so this is this is the kind of thing we're gonna I'm gonna give you on the on the midterm. You've measured this. There was 15 millimeters of transmission line in the way. Now you need to come back to find out what the impedance of this is before you can start doing a match, right? How would you start? Can you repeat the question one more time? So from this point, right, this, this point way back here, right here, this is the same point, and the point to go on the board and this little pin here. I've measured 11.6 minus J23.3. But I want to match this to 50 ohms. Well, I really want to match all of this to 50 ohms, but I want to match this as best I can with two components. I know what the impedance is at this point, but I don't necessarily know what it is here. Did you map that on the spoof chart and then do the wavelength location? Exactly. So first you'd have to normalize this, right? And so we would have um, little ZL, and I'm calling it little prime because it's not really ZL, right? It's got this other crap in the way. So I'm calling it prime just to differentiate it. And this would be 11.6 over 50 minus J23.3 over 50, whatever those numbers are. Uh, conveniently, we can just plot those because I can ballpark it from, from I. And on the Smith chart, it looks like 0.2 is about here-ish. And you can't see that because I'm super zoomed in. No. Someone did math on me. What are these numbers instead of the fraction? 0.2 and 0.5. Probably, right? Yeah, maybe a little, a little bit more precise. I'll get it. Oh, right here. 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 
the next step? We, we, we started our point, we know we need to move backwards on the Smith chart, right? Which direction we gotta go to go backwards? Clockwise? Who has a better answer? 50% chance. Counterclockwise, go backwards. So we, when you add in transmission line length, it's clockwise, right? It's, it's, it's an oddity to remove transmission line length, right? But we're doing this because we know the impedance is here. The only thing in the middle of this is this transmission line. And if we want to know what this impedance is, we have to remove it, right? So we need to go backwards. So how many wavelengths is that? Well, we, we need more data, right? You need the frequency? Uh, we have the frequency. Oh, I should write that up here. So um, Bluetooth or... Uh, Bluetooth, technically Bluetooth low energy, still in there, is 2.4 um, gigahertz, and that's the carrier, which is irrelevant to this class, but it extends through 2.487 gigahertz, and that's the data channels. Obviously you want all your data to come through, so your data also has to be impedance matched, um, or if you lose data, right? Um, we're gonna pick the middle of this range, so our frequency is, just for the sake of this single point thing, we're gonna pick a frequency right in the middle of 2.444 gigahertz, which is pretty much the okay, So we know the frequency. What else do we need to know? Wavelength. Well, is our wavelength just easy, or is it half an error? Uh, isn't it easy? It's all going through coax or transmission. Line, right? Not this stuff. Especially the stuff we're worried about removing, right? That's on the surface. That's that's this stuff. I'll pass this around. You can look at it. So if my trace is here. Half of the wavelength, half of it's in air, and half of it's in the thickness, as thin as oh, it is. Oh, because the stuff. antenna is receiving through air, basically? Yeah. Okay. Well, yes, mostly the, the trace is visible to the naked eye. Okay. You can see it through the air. Okay. So the electric field must also be there. Okay. If it was in a buried layer, we could say, oh, yeah, it's probably a buried. Um, so we would pull up Saturn PCB. We would say, oh, the trace is this thick, it's this, that we would we'd get our calipers out and measure. And we would say that our, I'm going to make up a number, our epsilon r is 2.3, and then 6. Technically, that's, I guess, epsilon effective. And who remembers the difference between epsilon effective and epsilon r? I asked this last class too. Epsilon r is just a scalar, and then epsilon effective is like, it's like a, there's this long formula. It's like also a scalar. Scalar One's uh, the open air and the line, and one yes. is the line. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, yeah. If you've got, if you've got, on this on this PCB, you've got we've got this. We've got some FR4, and we have a ground plane on the bottom, and this is all copper. And on the top, you have some signal trace. Let's see and then it's surrounded by more ground plane. And all of this is also copper. Right. So my E field is doing this. I guess you can't see that very well. It's going left and right, it's going down, but it's also going this way. So I've got some E field in the air. It's not entirely in FR4. FR4 has an epsilon r of, let's say, 4.2, which is a common value, and air has an epsilon r of 1, right? Or, sorry, not 0. Pretty much 1. So, how do you blend 4.2 and 1? Eh, it's a whole mess. That's why you have Saturn PCB. Right? You have to input all that crap in, you would get some number out, let's just say it's 2.36. So the effect is basically just 
scale or, or where. It's how do you blend air and whatever dilute. Specifically all this free space and some other medium. You only get one number to, to divide by, right? Yeah. So you gotta come up with what that number is and how, it, how evenly it's split between one and 4.2 depends on all the geometry. And yes, of course there's a formula for it, but oh my god, I, no one's ever gonna ask you to do that, is right? It, is it specifically between uh, FR4 in free space? Could be whatever you want. Okay, so whatever yeah. material it is, more than likely that's FR4 because it's cheap. Okay. Almost, if, if in doubt, it's probably FR4. Mm -hmm. um, the only time you would go, ooh, what's this? If you look at Rogers, it's uh, like FR4 is kind of that beigey, yellowish kind of color. Rogers is white. And if you scrape that, it's kind of, it kind of powders away. It's a different material. Um, and go back to just my hair. So here it is in say we were copal hair. Can we do copal hair on this? Yeah, I don't want you to do copal hair, but that's fine. Um, oh cool. Uh, so this is this is what this is, and it's it's this enormous formula that nobody uh, okay, he doesn't show you the formula because it's too big. Uh, and that's fine. So yeah, you would use you would use you would find some uh epsilon. For this class, I'm going to give you the effective. I'm not going to make you go calculate it. It's just busy work. Um, okay. So now that we know epsilon effective and we know, uh, so we'll go back to this. Uh, if we know epsilon effective, we know the frequency, we can now know the wavelength, right? Why am I pulling my computer back up? Because I don't want to calculate the wavelength on this computer before. So if we go to to do this, right? I don't care if you can do the math. I'm impressed, it's cool. It's a waste of time. Yes, I give you way too much time to do my tests. This isn't why. It's not because I want you to go and hand calculate and show your work, right? 2.36, what's the frequency? And you actually hit solve. And what the hell is this an imperial? Almost eight centimeters. Let's just say it's eight, because it's close enough. I think it's actually why I picked this example. Um, so we have a, a frequency of eight centimeters. We have a, a wavelength of 15 millimeters. So what is eight or 1.5 divided by eight? Less than 25 percent. I want to say like 25 percent is still more than enough to have to compensate. Okay. Remember, 25 percent of a wavelength is halfway around the Smith chart. Sorry, where'd you get the 1.5? 15 millimeters, 8 centimeters. Oh. I think it's 18.5 percent. You guys are really good at not using calculators. You're gonna make me do it. <laughs> Where'd it go? 8 divided by. So we were at 0 0.1875 lambda. That's 15 millimeters is 18.7% of a wavelength, right? So now on our Smith chart, we're getting a starting, a starting value. And we started here. 0.043, just call it 0.4340, or, sorry. That's close enough to 0.43 on the call. And we want to go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, not concealed carry weapon, to remove transmission line length. And what point is that going to be at? We're going to count. We're going to go. We're at 0.43. What's 0.43 minus that number? Two 
2425. Or let's just call it right here. We're going clear over here, right? And then we just take our compass, put it down on our point, and travel there. Remember, it's a transmission line. So it's its own circle. And we have approximately measured that whatever that point is, is this point. We'll talk about that. Remember that in fall. I want you to remember this. That comes, this comes up. Uh, the penetration of waves based on frequency. Does anybody have a problem? Not like, I don't agree with you, but like, could you do this? Who, who feels like they could not get to this point? Can you remind me what the map is when you're uh, working out how much you're moving clockwise? I subtracted, I went from 0.43 and I subtracted 1.18. Yeah, 0.18 okay. minus 0.1. Yeah, 2.425. Yeah, okay. So I went from here to 0.2425. And just subtracted. This is that minus. So that, that's minus 0.8 lambda. What's that upper point that we're trying to get to? This point? Yeah. Right over here. So I started at 0.43, and I went to about. The number was was uh, 0.2425, but I'm plotting my hand, so I did about, about 24.2 ish. And where did we get 0.43? that's where we started. So this was the point we, we, we put, we measured off the scope, or sorry, the, the DNA. Oh, okay, right. That's what and so you just draw a line through it, and that's, that's just a starting point, just index here. We started at this point. That's not necessarily a measure of how many wavelengths you are anywhere, it's just a, this is where you started. And we want to remove 15 millimeters of transmission line length, so we calculated how many waves lengths 15 millimeters is on this board, Right? So we had to take all this geometry and BS into equations, put it in this mid piece, or, uh, Saturn PCB, get an effective epsilon so we could calculate a wavelength. So wrote, right? 0.43 is how much the... 0.43 is, the... is not how much anything. That's yeah. just where we started. In terms of wavelengths, right? Nope, just the starting point. It has nothing, it has no bearing on the great you question. Took, you took a point and you drew I just a, drew a line okay, to the center, and yeah. that, that's, that point 0.43 is where that line happened to intersect. Okay. It's not a measure of anything. Awesome. Great question. I never considered that being something people would trip up on. Um, but it makes a lot of sense. So we went from point 0.43, we went to point 0.245. If you subtract these two numbers, you approximately get this number. Again, we're, we're doing this by hand. This is enough four digits back to it, right? Doing it by hand. Okay, so now we're going to match from this point. Because that is the actual impedance of this. Everybody see that? And if I said, I want you to make it low pass. How far did we go? So we went from, that's 0.01 and that's zero. So let's say we went from, sorry, that's 0.1. We went from 0.005 to 
made the same mistake last time. Cap. That's Lopez. And it went down with a shunt C, right? And it went from positive 0.05 to 0.4. So we went, we traveled 0 0.045, right, in B. Remember, this is still normalized, so I'm going to use a, 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 a prime. This we went negative j 0 0.45. If you guys don't use calculators, you want to make me do it all the time. One divided by 0 0.45 is two point eighty two. Aaron's not even here to yell at me, and I'm still scared of him. <laughs> Negative two point repeating twos. <clears throat> How did I do B to C, or B to X? And why did I do it? Because then shunt is one over. Okay, because shunt is one over, but why is it one over? More of a concept question. Because it's admittance? Technically, yes. It, oh, it's susceptance. Oh, did you? So, yes. Remember, if you've got impedance, is real part plus or minus some imaginary part, impedance, resistance, reactance. Y is admittance. So, that's the whole chart, the whole blue chart. And that is, um, uh, now I forget his name. Um, over J susceptance. I'm going to draw a blank on that. Conductance. Resistance conductance. Right? And in generally, every single one of these is just one over the other. Right? So if we started with V, we need to get everything in terms of X. Right? So we had to take one over this to get to this number. And we did that only for the shunt component, right? Because the shunt component is the one that we measured along the emittance circles. The blue circles are the emittance circles. Okay. And now we're easy, and we're just going to go. Oh, so you, you measured using capacitance, put along the blue line, and you converted it afterwards, basically. You measure. That's the blue you lines, yeah, you measure, you measure it like this. Like, so I went from, if this is 0 0.1, and that's 0, about halfway between that, right? So I'm going to say that's a, a plus, um, plus j 0 0.05. And I went all the way down to this point, which is 0 0.4, is negative. So to get there, I had to travel that distance, this distance that I traveled. Yes. And you add it. So you add their magnitudes, I guess. But. Are you seeing the same thing on your smoke chart? Yes. Are you plotting it by hand, or are you just kind of staring at it? I'm staring at it. <laughs> I, that's fine. It really does help to plot it. If you if you need some smoke charts, I do have some here for you. If, you, if that's like your one precious one, don't no. let don't let not having a smoke chart in class be your one precious one. I do want you guys to print your own out, but if shit happens, I've got some in my bag. I don't want you guys to not do it um, because it's really one of those things. Like if you do it by hand, it's looking at the numbers and plotting. When you have to get when you have to get to the midterm, this is almost the exact problem when you do the midterm. It's just a different setup and different lengths and different pieces. This is the, the big forty percent of your midterm problem. I'm going to give you a real life thing. It's got some things, some some transmission line length to it, and you're measuring like you would in the real world. You're measuring from the only place you can measure on a DNA. The, the SMA port's right here. You can't put an SMA port right here, or if you can, they didn't. You don't have the option to just stick one wherever you want, right? You have to, you have to measure from wherever the, the SMA port is at. So, but in order to match this, you have to match it before that transmission line length. 
And in order to match it, you have to know what this impedance is in the first place. So the first step is, okay, let's remove this 15 millimeters, find out what this is, and then match it. And then once we add this 50 ohms back in, it doesn't matter anymore. It can be, it's just become part of the 50 ohm transmission line. It just circles around, yeah, over and over. Okay, and then so from this point, we were at negative two, so we went to zero. And our XL is just a positive J2. Does everybody see the two on the Smith chart? How I added plus two. Sam, no? That's fine. So this was, we went from our, our series cap, we got to this point, right? Mm -hmm. And if we follow this point down, we see this curve. And it comes down and there's a two there, and you can't see it really well in the document camera, but if you look at your Smith chart, you can see it. So we went from two, we went up to here. What's the admittance, or, what, or what's the, the, the uh, imaginary part of any impedance here? Zero. zero. So if we went from a two to a zero, we had to have gone two. Okay. That's the distance, sorry. Norm, here we had to subtract, we had to go, okay, well, we were along this line, and here's one, and here's our point one, and here's zero. So we said, well, that's about in the middle. So we're going to call it 0.05, and we traveled down to this point. I'm oh, sorry, this point on the blue line, and that was at four or 0.4. So that distance was a 0.45. You see that? Yeah. Good. And then the second point, it's just like okay, so now we're in series, so we're going to use the red circles, and we're at two. And we go to zero. It had to be whatever whatever it is. It has to be zero, or it has to be that that value because. Okay. Cool. Why for the capacitor do we have to uh, do the math and put it into the X? Because we're in shunt. Okay. And when you're in shunt, you follow this blue line, all the blue circles, right? And but those circles should... are not in reactants. So if I have a, oh. if, if I say this is my Smith chart, my real line, that's my simplified Smith chart, right? Yes, of course, there's, you know, there's that line too, and there's a bunch of others, I'm not gonna draw them. I would also say, well, there's also this circle, and these are doing that as well. If I am out here, that circle exists, and that's one of the ones we kind of used. These circles, this whole thing is an admittance chart. So instead of being in black where you had admittance is resistance plus or minus J reactants. That's the black one. But on the blue one here, and this blue one, you have admittance is G plus or minus J B. So as long as you're moving along one of the blue circles, you have to convert. You're measuring in B if you're on a blue circle. And all of our formulas, I'm sure they exist, you can go dig it up, but all of our formulas to convert these two figures, we're converting our, cap our caps and inductance based on what the reactances are, not what their susceptances are. To convert from susceptance to reactance for all shunt components, but never do it for series components because you'll screw yourself up. And it won't be obvious. It's not like, like, these are both numbers you would totally encounter on a spin chart. If you do it for the wrong one, you'll screw yourself up. It'll be entirely wrong. The other reason I want you to use the Will Kelsey site, it'll help you double check the names. And in the real world, you'll probably have those tools to do that. I want you guys to use it. I don't want you to use it as a crutch, but I do want you to use it. Okay, so for shunt components, we got a negative four five, we one overed it, took the reciprocal of it, and that's our, uh, our reactance of the capacitor. And we have our reactance of the inductor, but these are normalized, right? So then, XL must equal 100, J100, Aaron, and XC must equal J, Nine, minus J, he's not here to yell at me and I still can't stop. You're safe. <laughs> I'm safe. He can't get me, he's not here. No, I snoop, I snoop. Anyone who sends me an email, by the way, if it's a new student, I'm like, I'll look them up on LinkedIn, and I find out what they did. 
And he sent me an email, and he's got like two master's degrees. I'm like, you should be teaching this class, man. Like, what the hell? Um, he's, got, he's like a mathematician. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so these are our starting values. So this obviously isn't the value of our capacitors or our inductors, right? This is just their impedances, or they're part of their impedance, right? This is the reactance of those components. We need to know the frequency. Well, I argue the frequency, right? So the capacitor is 1 over 2 pi f xc. You can pop that in. And L is, uh, I think it's XL over 2 pi F. That's right. Yes. So you pop those in, you should get some numbers come out. Don't make me calculate it on this piece of graph that someone wants up here. Yes, 